No, thank you, Gerard. I'm taking Mrs. Bryce to the tea rooms. We'll be about a half an hour or so. This was all rather a pleasant surprise. Why would you say that? Well, I never imagined you to be the sort of man who would enjoy going shopping with a lady. My future wife isn't just any lady. <laughs> Why were you so insistent that I buy the green dress? Because I thought it was more becoming. But I preferred the blue. Well, I must confess, I did have a particular reason in mind. Did you now? Whatever is this? Open it. <laughs> Absolutely beautiful. I'd like you to wear it tomorrow night. <laughs> you are full of surprises today. But what on earth is happening tomorrow night? Your father's asked me to arrange a dinner party. I'd like you to be my hostess. Of course. Who is to be the guest of honor? Edgar Swan. How oh, nice. Edgar Swan. I wonder what father's up to. Mm, he didn't say. But I suspect I'm being used in the nicest possible way, of course. I hope nothing's wrong. Oh, I don't think so. Perhaps he's being considered for a diplomatic job. I hope so. I like Edgar very much. Well, we all do. Now, let's find the tea rooms. <laughs> Why you weren't at dinner? I thought things would be tense enough without me. I think your father's looking more tired tonight than I've ever seen him. Though I don't suppose you'd notice that. As a matter of fact, I have. And doesn't that bother you at all? You're not the only one who loves him. Of course it does. Then why, Amy? Why are you doing this to him? Because I have to follow my conscience. At the risk of driving your father to his grave? Father is stronger than he appears to be. And you are testing that strength to the limit. Why couldn't you have just gone along with his plan? Because I couldn't. Felicity, this is very important to me. I wish you could understand that. And I wish you could understand just how much is at stake. Your father's health. Tommy's career, perhaps even Godfrey's in my marriage. I do know that. Is this cause really worth it? Felicity, it is too late to change my mind now, even if I wanted to. Why is it too late, Amy? Because Jennifer has said she would defend me. Jennifer? Yes. She understands, she believes in the cause too. I know it's partly Godfrey's fault that you've been put in this dilemma. What has he said? Well, just as we discussed. That he offered to help, but you refused. You want to be independent? <laughs> There's rather more to it than that, I'm afraid. I didn't mean to pry. I'd like you to know. There was some money missing from the office funds after the accident. They all thought Bill must have used it for something of his own. Well, there seems to be no other explanation. Well, his father offered to cover the deficit if I agreed, among other things, to stop working. Well, I can't stop working now. And besides, it would look as if I thought Bill took that money and I don't. Anyway, one day I'll find out what really happened to it. I don't know where you get the courage. Oh, that's not so difficult. I loved Bill. Well, the children will be delighted with the cake. <laughs> if I'd only thought, I could have bought you something so that you didn't have to cook tonight. Oh, don't worry. They've settled for fish and chips. They'll be happy. <laughs> you like the theatre, don't you? Yes, I do. I'm going to a matinee of Kid Boots on Saturday. I wondered if you'd like to come. I would love to, thank you. What are you doing on Saturday? Well, I wonder... I'm going to go and see Kid Boots. I was wondering if you'd like to join me. Jennifer said she'd come too. 
Jennifer, you'll be popular with father. I'll take a chance on that. Will you come? Felicity! Hello, Godfrey. You look wonderful. Oh, thank you. Would you like a sherry before dinner? Just a small one. All right. Just a small one. Amy? Yes, please. Well, Tommy and I have just been making plans to spend the day at Flemington this Saturday. Really? How nice for you. And we both thought how delightful it would be if you joined us. Well, the housekeeper can pack a hamper. We'll make a picnic day of it. I'm sorry, Godfrey, but I've made plans for Saturday. Well, nothing you can't break, surely. I've arranged to go to a matinee. I'm sorry. I see. Excuse me, I'll just see how Cook's getting on with dinner. You're disappointed. Yes. Well, that's not entirely in my hands. I've invited a friend. Well, I had hoped to put the day to some effective use on Tommy's behalf. Well, he's been making such a splendid effort of late, I feel I owe it to him. And I also look forward, unreasonably perhaps, to having you with me. Godfrey. And who is taking you to the theatre? I'm taking Jennifer. I went to see her today, just to see how they were settling in. And how are they settling in? Very well. It's a trifle chaotic, but they'll manage. They're such a close-knit family. Quiet. Well, I'm sorry about Saturday. Amy was so looking forward to it. Amy? Hmm? Oh, yes. Well, I thought it'd be a good opportunity for you two to get to know each other. Well, she's been so listless since her brother died. Well, I won't go on about it. Shall we go into the dining room? Godfrey, wait. Are you saying that you won't go on Saturday if I'm not with you? Well, it does rather remove the focus of the outing. I suppose I can postpone the theatre. Jennifer won't mind, I'm sure. Of course she won't. Yes. We can go another day. I'm very grateful. Congratulations. Beginner's luck. <laughs> There's Edgar Swan. Steve, my dear, this is a surprise. Mr. Swan, how lovely to see you. I don't believe you've met my fiance, this Godfrey Carson. Indeed, a pleasure, Mr. Carson. I've heard a great deal about you from Sir Humphrey. Mr. Swan. So I, I tried to interest your father in a part ownership. And what did he say? Quite a lot as usual, but nothing to my advantage. <laughs> Still, I told him I'd keep an eye out for him when I go to New Zealand for the yearling sales. You'd have to convince him that you found nothing less than a second carbine. <laughs> <laughs> and when are the yearling sales? Uh, January, during the summer recess. I take it you expect to have gone to the polls by then? Stanley plays these things very close to the chest, but it certainly should be by the end of the year. And you obviously anticipate being back in the house? It's a, a light track, and I usually draw the inside running. Yes, it should be an easy ride home. Oh, Tom, I headed down. Would you gentlemen care to accompany me? Thank you. Felicity, my dear, we'll join you in the stand. Enjoy yourselves. Amy, I'm going to go and powder my nose. Would you like to come? No, thanks. Shall we join the others, Amy? You've met Alan Manning, haven't you? Mrs. Felicity Bryce, my father's fiancée. Mr. Manning. Pleasure to meet you, Mrs. Bryce. I'm awfully sorry, but I'm afraid you'll have to excuse me. My friends will be wondering where on earth I've got to. Till next time. Next time? Will there be a next time? Doubt it. Father has made it perfectly clear he's not welcome in our house. Perhaps I could negotiate. <laughs> Just as you negotiated, I'll go into the theatre. You'll never change my father's mind about anything, whatever you think. It amuses him to let you try. You're just a pawn on his board like the rest of us. Shall we go? Amy? Yes? Thank you for coming with me today. I'm so glad we've managed to become friends. So am I. Even if we didn't get off to the best start in the world. You took me by surprise. I really can be quite adaptable when I put my mind to it. 
do think, as we are friends, that... Oh, Amy, uh, I was wondering if you'd tell me something about your mother. Would you mind? Why do you ask? Well, I just thought it uh, might help me to understand you and the boys and your father a little bit. <laughs> I don't remember much. What do you want to know? Oh, I don't know. Uh, what was she like? She was pretty. She used to laugh a lot. <laughs> She loved music and flowers and books. She sounds nice. She used to read me a story every night before I went to bed. I'd make her read The Little Mermaid over and over. <laughs> that always used to make me cry. <laughs> <laughs> me too. When she became really ill, she couldn't see to read anymore. You know, I think that upset her more than anything. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have asked you. It's none of my business. I've gotten so much. I used to pick roses for her, put them beside her bed. They were her favourites. Was she in bed a long time? Only towards the end. Gerard used to carry her downstairs or put her in the drawing room or out in the garden. He nursed her? Oh, yes. He did everything for her. He looked after us, the house. All the things Mother couldn't do. He was wonderful. To her, at any rate. You didn't like him? Even less than I do now. <laughs> he was always shooing me out of a room, telling me to leave her alone, not to make any noise. Surely that wasn't what your mother wanted. I suppose she was too weak to argue. She just left all the decisions to him. I was so young, Felicity. None of it's terribly clear now. Why don't we collect the dress after lunch? Shall we go to the Café d'Italia? 